I'm passionate about birth. I believe we need to change the story of birth in our culture. We need to transform how we welcome new beings into this world. I think this shift is crucial, crucial for our physical and cultural health. We have new insights into why the how of pregnancy and birth matters. I consider myself a birth activist. It happened birthing my own children and deepened as I listened to friends talk about birth. I'd like to share my birth stories with you as I now understand how we're born makes a difference in our futures. It shapes our worldview, which in turn <clears throat> affects our ability to love and live in connection on this planet. This collage represents my first child's birth. We had a birth plan and agreements, but that didn't matter at all. I was very disoriented. We were all traumatized. But this is how society, most of society, still gives birth, guided by the medical industrial model. It's called the slippery slope of interventions. This is the previous child that you heard about in the intro. Um, I was in the middle of tremendous life stress, and he was born at 29 weeks, weighing one pound, 10 ounces. Several birth professionals later looked at my records and said, I would have told you to go to bed and eat a lot more vegetables and protein. So I'm now radicalized. Our daughter tapped me on the shoulder before conception, asking to be born. I asked my husband how he felt about that, and nine months later, she was born. <laughs> Our midwife was at another birth, so she sent an assistant, who when she got there called the EMTs, fire and police department, and the sage burning in the house raised quite a stir. But despite the drama, she was born at home. This is our fourth child, who was also born at home, <laughs> with all the children present. That's not actually him. He looked kind of like that joyous kind of thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, all of our kids were there. There were two midwives and a predecessor. It was called a party birth. Oh, we're on to the next one. Oops. <laughs> OK. Um, this is for all the parents in the audience. Um, this is not about guilt. Um, this is about doing better with what we know now. Um, for the future generations. So my birth experiences each time progressively compelled me to read more, eventually finding pre and perinatal psychology, which is a research field focused on the foundations of health, making the connections with our bodies, minds, emotions, and spirits. It helps us discover our response patterns to life. And the birth psychology arena includes attachment theory, which is how we connect with people in our world and how it influences our behavior, epigenetics, which is the study of how our gene expression is guided by our experiences, and neuroscience, which is how we are physically wired. So the conception and gestation slide. <laughs> Due to recent scientific developments, we can now see and gauge what's happening during pregnancy. The fetus experiences everything the mom does. Just being a wanted child influences development. Our experiences in the womb shape our experiences when we emerge. It, the blueprint is set. <laughs> so this picture jokes about nutrition, but we all know how important that is. Um, one of my favorite studies was done using sonograms with pregnant women who smoked. Every time the mom inhaled, the baby clamped the umbilical cord with his hand. Then the moms were asked to just think about inhaling. The baby clamped the cord. They're much more aware than we realized. OK, now, just take a second, and what do you see in this picture? What you see and how you interpret it is influenced by your own wiring. Our bodies remember all of our experiences from preconception on. We are learning that the capacity to love develops through a long chain of early experiences, particularly in the period surrounding birth. The way babies are born is the critical link of the chain that is routinely disturbed. That is why the industrialization of childbirth should become the main preoccupation of those interested in the future of humanity. And that's Michelle O'Dont, who's one of the founders of um, this field of research. So the birth process solidifies the baby's experiences during the pregnancy. It's kind of like um, all the information learned while in utero is pressed somehow into the baby during the birth. And interventions, whether they're necessary or not, interrupt the physio physiological birth. OK. <laughs> what do you think he's thinking? Maybe it's, um, oh, crap. What the heck is happening? Am I safe? Or here we go, oh, boy, or any of the variations in between. Our perceptions of what happens in the world are guided by what the wiring that is laid in utero. And babies remember. <laughs> I think this is what the baby in the previous slide was worried about. 
The goals in interacting with babies include to slow down, they process at 10% adult speed, and be as present and engaged in the moment as we can, but given our own births and our own attachment strategies, that's sometimes challenging. So now what? Once we start to recognize our patterns of behavior, do we want to change them? And if so, how? So this is what's really exciting to me. We can rewire our systems to better connect with those around us. This also helps with the parental guilt part. <laughs> So this is what enables us to change our wiring and repattern our behavior, it's the neuroplasticity. The picture on the left shows what might need changing. How do I view myself? How do I think I'm perceived? How do I interact? And the picture on the right is our wiring. The quality of pregnancy and birth and first year is critical to developing the neur neural pathways. The importance of the primal period, which is preconception to 12 months, cannot be overstated in my opinion. We believe that what we are learning with what we are learning, we can consciously ensure a healthier, more peaceful world. Humans are designed, physically and emotionally, to be in connection with each other. So this is my granddaughter, Amelia. She's two and a half. What kind of life possibilities do we want to give our future generations now that we understand why conception and birth matter? We're creating a new paradigm for the story of birth. <laughs>